If you're a real estate agent and you're tired of cold calling, door knocking, and spending money on ads, then subscribe to this podcast. We discuss leveraging the power of YouTube for your real estate business and how these strategies earned us over $1 million in GCI our first year in real estate. My name is Levi Lassick and my partner is Travis Plum. Let's get started. All right. Well, let's. Uh, um, I do have a hard stop. So, and I want to be respectful of everybody's time on here as well, including Gogo's, most importantly, because she is our special guest of honor today. So, super excited to uh, have Gogo join us today. And I'm going to, uh, first of all, say that uh, I've known of Gogo for, for quite some time and looked up to Gogo. And it was funny just because uh, in 2019, in 2019, I was invited to EXPCon. You know, the thing was, is I, it, you know, most of you know my story, and I always talked about I wasn't interested in being a real estate agent, right? I was uh, Michael Reese, my friend, has been trying to recruit me for 20 years. You know, he started with Keller Williams back in 2002, and that's when he was trying to get me into real estate. And, uh, you know, 2019 came around finally. So you see how persistent Michael is uh, still trying to get me in real estate after that long period of time. And 2019, he was like, hey, man, you know, I'm working with this company. You got to come check it out, come to the conference. And, you know, I'm a sucker for conferences regardless, even though I wasn't in the industry. I was like, I'm going to go check out EXPCon. And it was in Vegas. And I, I think I arrived, dropped my bags off. That was it. And I sat down at like a sushi bar, literally at the sushi bar. And it was just me, one other person. I, I qu- can't recall, but then it was Gogo. I uh, was sitting there hanging out. And so I just got a chance to sit there and chat with her and, and have a discussion. And I, uh, you know, heard, you know, she's just started telling me about her success and things. And it was very interesting. I was like, cool, definitely somebody, uh, somebody to know. Just never, ever expected it to ever you know, turn into anything. Again, I was still not even really, cons- I just went because again, Michael invited me, but I was kind of like, yeah, you know, again, I'll check out this whole real estate thing. Well, lo and behold, uh, really uh, just about a year and a half later, here I am, there I was. Uh, well, I ended up, yeah, 20, yeah, 2020. So yeah, a year and a half later, getting involved, getting into real estate. And so uh, that was it. Now I've seen, and then I would see Gogo speaking and I knew, um, you know, she was one of the the top attractors to the company, but also had, you know, did a significant amount of that through social media. And I'd heard of Gogo's boot camp, And then of course, you know, I started seeing her all over social media once you start following somebody. And, and uh, so something that I was just always impressed by, um, you know, and then, uh, but, you know, being involved with Michael and, and Jay and these guys, they were always kind of like my go-to, uh, you know, people that I've, that I've uh, leaned on. I never really reached out to go, go, or just never thought that, you know, these types of things would happen until we, you know, last year we got a chance to share the stage with Ryan Serhant. And that was an opportunity to hang out beforehand back in the green room. We went to dinner afterwards and it was just a, a great opportunity for us to get to know each other a little bit better. And just for me to hear her full story, which by the way, um, I, I'm sure she'll share with it, but she immigrated to this country on $200, uh, $200, I believe is the correct number. Is that correct? Yeah, borrowed. Yeah, $200. So I'll let her get into this. Um, but think of this, you know, there's a lot of times people make up narratives in their head. Uh, some people will refer to that as excuses. <laughs> and so the narrative in your head is very important because it's either going to be positive or negative. I don't think there's really much in between. And you're either going to create a narrative that is going to propel you uh, towards the goals you want to achieve, or you're going to create a narrative that's going to suppress, you know, your actions and keep you, you know, hold you back. And Gogo, somebody who immigrated to this country on $200, uh, did you, I don't believe you spoke English when you came, correct? No, I didn't speak English until I was 21 years old. Okay. And well, hold on. I thought I was speaking English when I was 21 years old. And then I landed in New York and this guy at the airport was talking to me and I said, English, please. And he said, I'm speaking it. And I was like, <laughs> oh, Whoops. if you're speaking English, I know what the heck I'm speaking, right? What I learned in school. But yeah, definitely my English is much, much worse than it is today. Awesome. Now, let me share with you. I'm going to read. There's so many stats here. I'm just going to read them off real quick for you guys. And so since then, think about that. Immigrating here, no English, $200 in your pocket. And since then, 
uh, featured in Inman uh, for the for an article for five social media best practices verified on Instagram, over 66,000 followers, top 125 most influential people, according to Success Magazine in 2022. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, so just last year, uh, top 125 in Success Magazine. That's a big deal. Click funnels two times, uh, two comma award winner. For those of you in the marketing game, you'll, you'll know what that means. Uh, has her own TV show, The Go Go Preneur. So you can check that out at gogopreneur.com. Ranked number 16 on the top 100 realtor on Instagram. Voted top real estate agent on social media in Detroit, Michigan. Property Spark voted number one real estate agent on social media and voted best realtor in Brighton, Michigan. So uh, there, there you have it. That And there's probably many more. That was just the list I was able to compile <laughs> for the time being. So uh, without further ado, welcome, Gogo. Thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. That is my favorite thing to do. I always tell my husband, I'm like, I think I was brought to this country to wake Americans up so you guys can realize how good you have it. <laughs> um, I always can say that every American should be taken out of this country and dropped off somewhere where you don't speak the language in a third world country and you'll come back and you'll kiss the ground every day that you were born in this country, right? It is very, um, you know, I was raised, born and raised in communism. Romania was a communistic country until I was eight years old, 1989. And so I had a little, um, thankfully, not a lot of understanding of communism. My parents, on the other hand, though, they lived 30 some years in communism. So I was joking, say you can take communism out. Uh, what is it? You can take a person out of communism. You can never take communism out of a person. Right. So I can still to the day see my parents' reaction to certain things. They still think very you know, like, oh, they're listening to us and, oh, you can't even think something. And, you know, they don't really, uh, they don't really live in freedom. In their mind, they still live in communism, right? And so um, I I am, I feel very thankful that they let me into this country. So 2000 and, no, 2003, January 20th, when I entered the U.S., thank God for the person who let me in, right, put that stamp in my passport and said, you're welcome to America, right? Um, I didn't get licensed in real estate until 2011. So I did all kinds of odd jobs. I, I was a babysitter. I worked in a restaurant. I did, I have a restaurant food safety auditor certification. I worked in a jewelry store. I worked in plastics department and NSF international. I mean, I, I like to joke and say, I did a lot of, uh, uh, process of elimination, what I don't want to be when I grow up kind of situation. Right. And, uh, Real estate kind of accidentally came to me. My neighbor thought that I would make a great realtor because I I did have a social media presence because um, that was my only way of communicating with my family at home, right? So to see my childhood friends and my you know my friends getting married and divorced and vacations and kids and growing up and my my own family, right? Like my sister, my parents, they all back home. So I did have a very healthy Facebook presence already, and I posted a lot and kind of kept in touch with everyone. So my neighbor thought that I would make a good realtor, and it's her doing today, then I'm a realtor. So I got licensed in 2011. And uh, I'm the sortest loser you'll ever meet. <laughs> nice. So when I, when I got into real estate, and I learned the stats, and you know, 80% of them will give up in the first two years, I was like, uh, well, I'm not going to be a part of that 80%. I'm going to be a part of the 20%. So then I did my research of what do the top 20 percenters do, which by the way, they will when they show up to a meeting, they have their cameras on. Allow me to take a quick break to remind you that we have very important links in the description below. If you want the full story of how we closed over 1 million in commissions our first year and over 2.3 million in commissions our second year, check out the first link. Also, you have the link to our number one Amazon best-selling book, Passive Prospecting. Last, if you enjoy this podcast and you're a giving person, leave a five-star review, please. Now back to the episode. You're never going to see me in a meeting with my camera off. So how you do anything is how you do everything. So if you're going to half us showing up to a meeting, then you're going to half us doing the work. Okay. You never, ever, ever going to see, see me in a Zoom call. Would you, could you imagine if I showed up here today? <laughs> That's why you had such a small picture on there because you never use it, right? Never. That's <laughs> not the point. The point is that whatever you do, especially when you build real estate business, you're building your own brand. So if you don't feel comfortable being on camera and having your face and your name out there, you're going to have a very hard time. I mean, I'm not saying you can't make it. You can make it, but you're going to be buying leads. It's going to cost you a lot of money to make money. It costs me zero in marketing to have nine companies today. But I show up. 
And I'm assuming 90% of you are not even listening. You showed up, but you're not even listening because your cameras are still off. Not my problem. That is yours to deal with. Okay, what's your question, Levi? Uh, well, if you can, uh, I would like to, do you mind sharing the story of why you wanted to move to America? I thought that was very interesting. And, oh. then, and then I want to get into, or, or is that, or, or is this, is this not? No, not things that you can ask me. When I decided to live my life. Well, the reason, the reason I asked, the, because yeah. like you said earlier, I think it's, it's perspective, you know, a perspective where I, I do believe that a lot of us get comfortable in our current situation. And I just got back from, you know, speaking opportunity and, you know, I was sharing some of that backstory in the military and to be in a deployed in a combat zone in a, in a worn torn country it provides you a lot of perspective when you see how, an, you know, another culture lives in their everyday lives um, in those types of situations. So yeah, I think it's something that, I, you know, it's it, you can until you've experienced that or done that, it's it's very hard to convey that. But, you know, you, you said something, I think when you were eight, you know, something impacted you significantly that made you want to, to move here. And I just thought that was an interesting story. And then I want to get into some social media stuff. <laughs> Sounds good. So um, I read this quote somewhere that said that, you know, life is happening to all of us, right? I believe it's happening for us, but we all bear our own crosses, right? So you are here to learn a lesson and hopefully still find the higher power on the other end, whatever you believe in, right? I believe in God. So there's this quote that says you can be a victim or a victor. It's your choice, right? Life is going to happen to you no matter what. How are you going to come out on the other end? Because God also gives you a choice, right? That is your choice. I chose the Victor route, right? So I was born in communism until 1989. I was eight, almost nine years old when Ceausescu got shot. My parents thought it was a great idea to watch it live on television that our president, not president, what was he, dictator, I guess, got shot in the head with his wife at the wall. <laughs> I was like eight years old. I'm like, oh, that's cool, right? No, it's not. But anyway, I saw that. And after that uh, communism ended, my dad went and bought a color TV and a VCR player, which a color TV back in the day was like a big deal. So when you live in communism, guys, you may not know that and be thankful that you don't know this, but there is no access to the outside world. Imagine living in a box with the lid on you get access to whatever they allow you to have access to, right? So we never seen anything outside of Romania. I've never seen, um, I mean, even just having, a, like I got chocolate for Christmas and an orange, like that was like the biggest deal because if you think about no access to Western world, there is no orange, there is no banana. It doesn't grow in Romania. So unless you import it in, it doesn't happen. And when you live in communism, import doesn't happen. Only whatever happens in the country that you're allowed to see and experience. So when my dad went and bought a color TV and a VCR player, he came home with two VCRs from Eddie Murphy, not coming to America. Everybody thinks it's coming to America. No, it was 48 hours by Eddie Murphy. And I watched the first 48 hours and I just thought, first of all, I've never seen a black person. I didn't know they existed. Again, communism, right? Whatever's in your own backyard is what you experience. So I just saw him and he looked so happy. Like I thought he was the happiest human I have ever seen. He was the funniest human I have ever seen. And in my little eight-year-old mind, I wanted to be where he's at because I thought he was happy because of where he was at, right? So, cause I wasn't happy where I was at. So I tied it to a location and I thought he was so happy. I want to be where he's at. And so that's my first recollection of coming to America. I didn't come until I was 21 years old. At the time um, I had a few options. I could come as an au pair, a live-in nanny or, um, on a cruise ship. So I applied for that job too. And then I also applied for a job. And here's another quote for the day, write this down. Thank the Lord or whatever you believe in that it doesn't grant all of your wishes. Because <laughs> I also applied for a job in an oil rig in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> Could you imagine me five foot two little blondie in the middle of an oil rig with a bunch of dudes? Like that would have went well. Thank <laughs> God that God doesn't answer all of our prayers, right? Um, so I got all of the jobs, but thankfully the au pair job called first. So I came as an au pair. If you don't know what an au pair is, it's a fancy French word for a living nanny. So I was a living nanny. Um, I worked for a family with four children in Brighton, Michigan. And then pretty much two months after I arrived here, I met my husband. We've been married happily ever since. So I knew back then that I'm going, right? So we have all of these subconscious things that you kind of just set out there. And then your subconscious will work for it, right? And it's going to find you a way. Well, mine found it when I was 21 years old. So some time went by. 
And then um, that's pretty much how I, I came to the US. So I'm here definitely for the American dream. I will die trying building it. Um, I want to make sure that if I think of it this way, I lived here now for 20, what is it, 22 years? This is my, what, no, 20 years, 20 years. Um, so I lived here for 20 years of my life, which is pretty much half of my life now, almost half. I'm 41 years old. Um, if I, in the 20 years that I lived here, I spent one birthday with my parents and my family. One. One Christmas and one birthday. So that's the price for the American dream. Anything that you want to achieve will come at a price. The question is, are you willing to pay it? Now I can tell you this, I didn't come here to half asset and I didn't come here to be like, well, maybe, maybe, I mean, you know, some people set their goals and they're like, okay, so I want to make $200,000, but if I make 60, I'll be okay with that. Well, then you're confusing the universe because now he doesn't know, do you want 200 or do you want 60? Because you sure freaking don't know what you want, then you can't have it, right? So I set my goals, the biggest possible, most horrendous American dream that you can think of, not horrendous, what's not horrendous, horrendous is not the word, the most obnoxious. Humongous. American dream, right? And that is what I'm going for. I'm not going to half ass it. So if I, if it's costing me 19 birthdays, then it better be freaking worth it. If it's costing me 19 Christmases and the fact that my children don't speak Hungarian, and my parents don't speak English and they barely see each other when they do, they can't communicate. It's better freaking worth it. I better be picking my kids up, my parents up in a limo from the airport. So then they can say it's worth it. They understand why I'm here. Right. So you have to look at your dreams. First of all, make it obnoxious. And ask yourself, are you willing to pay the bigger the price, the bigger the price? Wow, that's that's powerful. Well, thank you for sharing that. That's a, exactly uh, what I was looking for there. That was very impactful. And I think it's just interesting. So now now that you're here and you're uh, been in real estate now, um, and had that success, you know, I know we have people that are looking um, to to build their presence online. And really right now, if you're not online, I mean, uh, you're probably, uh, I mean, well, you should be. <laughs> so you're a little yeah. behind. So, you know what, let's talk about, um, I, I kind of like this. I was looking at your Inman article earlier and you have some really um, good points on there. So if we we can either go down that list uh, and say, I'm just, could you talk a little bit about creating a social calendar? And as far as mapping that out, I'm assuming you're, you're uh, you know, you, you map things out, kind of have a plan of what you want to do. That way, you know exactly what you're going to be doing on a month to month basis. Yeah. So I'll start with showing my calendar, I think, because raise your hand if you're visual. Huh? All of us, right? Most of us. Okay. So let me open up my calendar so this can help. <laughs> oh, you guys will love this. Okay, here we go. Share screen. Okay, see this? That's what my days look like. I tell my agents all the time, show me your calendar, I'll show you a bank account. It's really that simple. So when it comes to social proofing this, it's not like I go out of my way to create content for social media. My calendar creates the content for social media. So whatever I am doing, it's going to get videotaped or it's go or I'm going to go grab my phone very quick and do a selfie style video or take a picture of what I'm at with the person, tag the location, tag the person, tag the, you know what I mean? So it, I don't work, or, I don't sit down and think, oh, what am I going to post today? It's never like that. I grab my phone, whatever I'm already doing and becomes a post. So I don't pre-schedule my posts. I just create enough content. I put enough stuff into my calendar that something today is going to become a post. Your idea is when it comes to social media marketing is my job as a marketer, well, first of all, write this down, best marketer wins. You don't have to be the best agent. You just have to be the best marketer. The world just needs to know your name and the fact that you exist. You could be the best freaking realtor. If you don't have social presence, you don't exist. You might know way more about real estate than I do. I will win them every time because they know where to find me. You just need to be, you just need to exist. You need to be an option. So for that, number one is your brand. What is your name? What is your brand? 
How am I going to know you? Now, if I ran, I actually got the cutest text message today because I wished happy birthday to your past client because um, you should do that. By the way, your client's, count, your client's birthday should be in your calendar. So I wished her happy birthday this morning and she texted me back. I had no idea that my buyer's agent actually put her under contract over the weekend. So isn't this crazy? I just had her in my calendar to wish her happy birthday. And she actually got back under contract with us for the uh, third or fourth time in the last five years. So I got this text from her. Look at my very first business card. Can you see it? So I had my real name on there as Junvir Bethke. Um, from this is from 2015. She said, Ben, your A plus since uh, your A customer, so pretty much, uh, you know, the best customer since the beginning, Google, original business card when she started at the bottom and then she's self-made now. The love and respect I have for you, girl, is through the roof. Thank you both for helping me get into my third home since 2015. Right. But when it comes to marketing, you want to be top of mind and you want people to remember you. Now, if I ran real estate under my real name, it took me clearly a hot second to realize it's not going to work under my real name, right? So my real name is Junvir Bethke. Okay, let me type that for you and tell me if you would actually call me from a yard sign if you saw this name. I'm also going to type it in a Hungarian way so you can see all of the... Okay, there you go. Junvir Bethke. You would just love to call me, right? And be like, hi, I would like to talk to, um, yeah, that thing. Right? <laughs> that's, like when every, that's like when everybody says, Levi, Levi. All right, let's welcome Levi. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like I go to a doctor's office and the lady comes out with their clipboard, right? And they look and they look up and they look and they look up. And I'm like, yep, that's me. <laughs> I'm like, you're probably looking for me. So if you have a name situation like mine, you're going to have to figure out a better one. Something that people can actually pronounce. Now, if I was selling real estate in, in Transylvania, I could absolutely do that because it's a very common name. I, I'm named after my mom and there's thousands of joint years at home, right? But here, I would have a really hard time. Many of you would be like, uh, skip, I'll just call the other agent, right? Another agent. So you don't want that. So number one is your name. How do you want to be known? So I'm known as Gogo's real estate in the industry. Everybody just knows that, oh, you're that Gogo chicken, you sell real estate. That's all I need to. That's all I need you to know. I need you to know my name, and you need to know what I do. Because if you know my name, there's this thing called Google. Google me, you'll find me. I mean, I'm everywhere. You can't miss it, right? So number one, figure out if you don't have that name. If some of you are like, well, I kind of do that, but kind of doesn't work. I'm Google's Real Estate everywhere. I own Google's Real Estate.com, Google's Real Estate Team.com. I'm Google Batki. I'm here. I'm Google Batki there. It's pretty much Google's Real Estate or Google Batki. Okay, so you are going to have to have number one, own that name. And number two, your image has to be the same everywhere until people recognize you after hot yoga, buying a mascara at Sephora. I wouldn't even recognize me. And this lady was next to me in the hall, the aisle, and she goes, oh, check the go, go check that sounds realistic. And I was like, how the heck did you recognize me right now? I look hideous. But that is your goal. Your goal is to A, them to know your name, know what you do, and recognize your face. Now, if you no longer look like that person, because some realtors have their 1999 high school special picture up there, don't be that agent, remove that. Because if you and me are going out for lunch and I can't recognize you at Starbucks, because I looked at your social profile and you look nothing like that person, that is false advertising, remove that, replace it with what you look like today and own it. Because guess what? Can you hide what I look like on social media? If you want to do it right, you're going to be on camera all, all the time. Like I, I joke and say that you can see me hot and hit. It's only the difference is makeup and filters, right? Sometimes I look hot, sometimes I look hit, but the brain is the same. I'm just as smart <laughs> when I look hideous, when I look pretty, but you have to own it. So no matter, you better, and if you see, well, I don't like the way I sound go, guess what? That's what you sound like, get over it, okay? Number one. So these are the rules. These are the basics of social media. You need to own it. Be proud of yourself, who you are, and rock it because you're going to find your people. If you allow people to get to know you, Tom's people will never sign up with me. They're going to sign up with Tom. Tom's people will never sell or buy a house with me. They're going to sign. They're going to buy and sell with Tom. And same with Calandra. Your people are your people. My people are mine. There's nothing you can do. My people will stick with me and your people will stick with you. But the only way that they can stick with you if you allow them to get to know you. So Paul D, hopefully I'm saying your name right, you have to allow them to get to know you, who you are as a human. 
Now, I don't want you to, so what does that mean? I want you to build real relationships, right? So most people who follow me, they know that I have a type one diabetic son. They know that I have a bulldog. They know that, that, that I speak Hungarian. They know that my parents are here for a month, right? So when you allow people to get to know you, they will find something in common with you. And when they find that thing in common with you, no matter what you do from that moment on, you're going to earn their trust. And when you earn their trust over time, they'll buy whatever you are selling. If I start selling yoga pants, they're going to start buying yoga pants. Now, I don't sell yoga pants because I don't want to, I don't want to ruin my real estate brand. Let's go down that path, right? When you start building social media, while well, you're going to have companies reach out to you and they're going to offer you all kinds of affiliate income. Don't fall for it. It is cute for the moment, but you're going to lose your brand over time. So if you see me ever market anything when it comes to so said affiliate income, I only market things that I actually personally use and love. If I don't use it, I don't market it. I don't care how much they offer me because I will lose your trust. And if I lose your trust, then it doesn't matter what I'm selling in the future, you will never buy it. Does that make sense? Do you guys want me to go down the path of affiliate income a little bit? Yes. And also, I just wanted to touch on what you you know said at the very beginning, which I had never uh, thought about it the way you said it. But it's funny because we talk about on here as a lot of our trainings is that agents, you are making 50, 100 pieces of content per day. It's just your decision whether you document that or not. And what I love is, is Gogo said, my calendar is my social content, which that's the way I had never thought of it before because uh, Betty knows, uh, we've talked about this on our team meetings, right? You know, agents, a lot of agents will look at an open house as, oh my God, that's two hours out of my Saturday. It's not something I really want to do. Other agents are going to say, okay, well, I know how to pre-market, how to drive traffic. I get a circle prospect. I get a knock on some doors around there. And while I'm in there, if there's any downtime, I can make a video in the bathroom, in the kitchen, in the backyard, on the front porch, you know, in the bedroom. I have those opportunities to turn that into content opportunities as well. And so that's how you maximize. And I think that's a great way to really say, uh, you know, to, to whenever people like to say, well, I don't have time. It, clearly, if you don't have time to make content, that's exactly why you should make content because content is one of the best leverages of your time. But the thing is, is like, okay, well, let's look at your calendar. And yeah, my favorite is like, okay, how do you, how do you, um, who on here, actually, let's play this game. Who on here feels like they don't have time to make content? <laughs> nobody's going to speak up now. <laughs> hey, I don't bite. I might bark, but I don't bite. I promise. Be honest with yourself and with the rest of us. Anybody, do you feel like you don't have time to create content? Okay, so I can go on all of your guys' profiles. And if I find one that didn't have, didn't post something in the last week, I can pick on you. Because if you didn't post anything even yesterday, I would draw the conclusion that you don't have time. Oh, here's a good one. So Armando says he doesn't have time to edit the content. Armando, I don't edit anything. <laughs> I take, I post. Now, don't get me wrong. I put, I use some filters, but it takes after you learn to use the con, you know, use learn to use the apps. It takes you two seconds to edit something. Really? Nothing can go. Right. So, so all of you are amazing on social media. Okay, then why are we on this call today? Everybody's killing it. Holy go. So I really appreciate that you say whatever you do in your day is content. I, I really think that's what I'm missing. Part of my, and part of my transition is I'm working law enforcement full-time and then I'm doing this on the side. So my content isn't where I want it to be. So I'm really trying to transition into that because I can't use my daytime job, like my yeah, law enforcement probably, job. Probably, I, I hate to say this, my best friend Megan just left yesterday and she's a police officer in Hamburg, right? Uh, Michigan. So you are the exception to the rule. Um, also, because your current job, it doesn't allow you to necessarily have that public persona, right? So right. I think you kind of have to walk that that fine line between. <clears throat> so I can tell you what my friend does. She kind of created a almost like a fake persona, right? There's her real name and there's her online name. Okay. So she can be found necessarily unless the person would face recognize her. They couldn't necessarily find her, right? So instead of having um, your real name in your real estate business, I would probably create something that's different than your real name so you can build both at the same time and people wouldn't recognize you. 
Okay. That's kind of the line I'm dancing. I'm trying to make sure I'm, you know, safety for everybody. Right. And then, yeah, so that's, so I'm kind of dancing that line and trying to figure out how to manage it. That's, that's just my thoughts on that, but I really yeah. appreciate so what is, yeah, what is your real name? So my real name is Marin Paldi. So I do under Paldi Homes, but, and so I've tried really hard because I've grown up and lived in the same area that I'm now a law enforcement in, but I've done 25 years here. So I'm kind of walking away from that career. So yeah. it's just kind of a transition piece, but I'm really struggling with the content daily, not because I don't have time. It's what I can use. And so that was just my piece. I really yeah. appreciate what so you said. I would and probably I change to out to something different. I mean, if you feel comfortable leaving your last name in your marketing, right? Because you do what you want something branded to you, right? But you're right. also walking that fine line of they can find you. Right. right? <laughs> and um, so I guess it's up to you how you want to do it. But I know in, in your line of work, safety's first. And I wouldn't want them to, I don't know what type of, like Megan, in my case, she pulls people over, right? So if they recognize her, they'll show up to her open house and, you know, <laughs> slash her tires or something. I don't know. Um, so I would, I would want you to find something that you feel comfortable with and almost like create two different personas. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you. You're so welcome. And and uh, if I can add to that as well, you know, this is where if if you have a position like that, I'm assuming you have shifts, which are designated times that you're on and off shift, give or take, you know, you run a little bit over. If you know that a week in advance, this is the time where you want to schedule, you know, look at that. So if you're, and I'm just saying, I know law enforcement doesn't work normal hours, but let's say you're eight to five, you want to look at, okay, well, I know it's 7 p.m. at night. You know, I don't, I, I have no obligation to my job once I'm home. So at 7 p.m. at night, that's where I'm going to create my content. Now, the other thing is, is if you're looking to transition, uh, let's say over the next 30, 60 days, now would be the time you can start stocking up videos, especially, you know, as us talking about YouTube as to where Instagram, Facebook, a lot like GoGo does a lot of live on the spot on and the moment, which is really ideal on those platforms as well, where Google, I mean, or YouTube, you know, we can, uh, you know, we can create videos and, and bank them. Basically, you don't have to publish that video. And so if you want to start making some of those videos in your off time and, and you could even get them all scheduled out on your channel, if you started the channel up, get them ready to go. And then that way, whenever you do leave that position or you're in a position where you're comfortable publishing that content, you basically start to schedule them out and, you know, schedule two or three to start publishing each week. And you could have two or three months worth of content by the time you get ready to leave that position. And I would also do probably a bunch of like open houses or tours, right? So fake it until you, or what is it? Fake it until you make it, I guess the word is. Um, so you could do uh, tours of properties, right? And you could go on a Saturday when you're not working and do back to back to back four vacant properties, tour them, say this is what's on the market, yada, yada. You could tour neighborhoods, you could tour uh, waterfront condos, whatever you want, right? So you say, okay, every Saturday morning, I'm creating content. And then you go, I want to be the best in... Um, I don't know, Pine Creek, and then you're going to go online, you're going to read up on Pine Creek, and you realize there's altogether 500 homes in average 18 on the market, in average on the market for 35 days, the average price is 350000 they have some condos, they have some free standing homes, right? Whatever it is, learn it, go shoot it. You can take a 15-year-old with you and hold the camera. Like, I literally pay a 17-year-old kid in my neighborhood to follow me around. And I did a job post on Facebook. I said, here's what I need. I need a person who can hold a phone without their hand shaking and push a button. If you can do that, you qualify for this job, apply. I literally got a 17-year-old who comes over all the time, in, you know, after school or before school and just holds the video and, and videotapes me all day long and goes with me to places and stuff like that. So it's easily doable. You just have to fill the calendar that you do have. And in, my, in your case, if I were you, I would change my name to something that is not tied to you. So they can put it together that that's the same person. Some may recognize you, right? But most people are not going to know who you are, so... Um, I would play it safe in that case. And then we have Virginia in here um, saying that you only want certain things on there. Um, so Virginia, do you, uh, actually, I don't see, do you see Virginia on here? Virginia, there you are. Okay, hi. Um, so Virginia, do you follow me? I do. Okay, so do you feel like you know quite a lot about me? No. No, okay, but do you know? I just started following you. You just started following me, okay. So if you follow me long enough, you're gonna feel like you know me, right? Because I do share a lot but I only share what I ever want you to know. <laughs> yeah, good point. But how much right? do you want people to know? Exactly. So whatever your comfort zone lies, that's how far you're going to push it. And the next month, your comfort zone might be totally different. Next month, you're going to be like, I don't care. Like when I lost my front tooth, guys, I, I didn't have a front tooth for eight months in 2021. Eight 
months, not hours, not days, <laughs> not weeks, months. Okay. And then it was COVID. <laughs> so God, I always joke and say God created COVID for me because then we put a mask on and I was like, okay, good. Nobody knows I don't have a front tooth. But I mean, I did presentations on stages. I walked around with my front tooth not in. Like I literally did not have a front tooth right here. And for three days, Virginia, I'll be honest with you. For three days, I had a pity party. And I was like, are you freaking kidding me right now? Like I'm supposedly the social media queen. I'm go supposed to go in, list a million dollar property and I don't even have a front tooth. I don't have a front tooth, Virginia. So for three days, I had a pretty party. And after that, I just wrapped it. I was like, well, this is what God gave me. So I'm going to be a flipper model. They gave me a flipper. <laughs> like I'm just going to rock this and make affiliate income off of flippers. Whatever God gives you, right? And whatever your comfort lies, but your comfort will change over time. But you do not know my skeletons. And trust me, I have them. How did you lose your tooth? You I forgot, bit into, forgot I bit into it. a sandwich. Oh. I bit into a sandwich and I heard the crunch. It was a tomato bacon sandwich. And I was like, oh, it's the bacon. It's the bacon. It's fine. It's the bacon. My, and I was trying to separate the sandwich from my mouth and I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, so then I put my tongue up there. I'm like, and I was like, there's, there's like my, you know how your teeth, stops your tongue yep. well it didn't stop mine it went right through that hole i was like <gasps> and then i somehow separated it and my teeth was waving like i could literally do this to it and it was like waving in the wind and then of course i got with the camera and i started doing a video <laughs> and my husband is like of course that's the first thing you would do right so this is what i mean by allow people to get to know you i got most like i got so many true followers in that period of time like you have no idea how many people had the same problem and they had they felt like they had to hide it and it gave them freedom to do the same it gave them freedom to rack toothlessness for 3 months so whatever god gives you this is what i said you can be the victim or the victor i came out as a victor and i freaking rocked that thing and i got thousands of views yes Pauly. so i've also wondered does that uh, uh, it, for you it worked really well because it uh, it enhances your brand but do people get convoluted messages when so like i have a great dane and i have kids does that take away from the real estate piece or is that really part of how you feel it so should that go? is a that is a great question so when you go to someone's profile i want you to look at their profile that is their storefront if you go look at my profile you're not going to see my kids you're not going to see my dog you're not going to see what i had for lunch and there's the great dane <laughs> Love it. But if you go to my stories, you're going to see all of those. Okay. So in the stories where you get to people to get to know you, those stories are up there for 24 hours and they go poof. Okay. My storefront, which is what you go to my profile and what you see, that's real estate only. That's mindset and real estate because that's, I believe, 90% of your success is these six inches between your ears, right? Um, you don't actually have to be a really good realtor. You have to be a really good business person. Right. Okay. That's so great. I want you. your storefront to be who you are, right? In the business. And in your stories, you can share moments with your great Dane and what you had for lunch and kids and you know, all of that stuff. So that if I can add to that, that's what we like to call incorporate, don't dedicate. So you can you incorporate those things into stories, but you don't dedicate like your whole profile to it. Because when you dedicate your exact personality, everything about you, then you're, I think you're limiting your crowd because you're trying to find people exactly just like you. But when you incorporate those things, it, then it, it resonates with people of all different sorts and kinds, and they have that connection. And, and uh, so incorporate, but don't dedicate. So same and as um, along those lines, when you go to someone's profiles, right. And it says, I love yoga and travel and I'm really in real estate and I cover Oakland County. I'm like, okay, you decide what you are, honey. Cause you're really confusing me. Right. I love all of those things, too, but that's not in my profile because that's my real estate profile. So only real estate is in that profile. You can still love yoga and you can love to travel and you can be a foodie and you can love God. All of those things. But that is not going to be in your bio because that is not what you do for a living. You don't want to confuse them. So if you want them to take you seriously, you have to take your business seriously. So it's real estate only. Stories, you can do whatever you want. Allow them to get to know you. Haley. Do you have um, like goals and metrics when it comes to your social media? Not like posting, but like growth, engagement, like that kind of stuff. Like, do you 
yeah, so it's not necessarily on... goals, right? But I look at it afterwards. So when I say whatever you post, you have to have a business account or at least a creator account because you need to see analytics. We are not doing this because I have nothing else to do today, guys. We are doing this and I'm taking it seriously. Social media is my business. So I don't have goals of what I want a, 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 a post to reach. So I don't post something of like, oh, it must reach 17,000 people or I'm a failure. Like I don't look at it like that, right? But I do look at it. I give it the right time let's say three days and three days later, I go back and say, okay, how did this post do? And if it did very well, then I look at, is it the hashtags? Is it the time of the day that we posted? Is it the subject that's about? Is it video or picture? Is it flyers? Is it letters? Is it the description, right? So you look at it afterwards to learn something from every single one of them. When you have analytics, you can literally, I'm the nerdiest nerd you'll ever meet. <laughs> By the way, I love numbers. I love analytics. I mean, my trackers have trackers. I mean, I have Google trackers, you name it. Anything can be, can be tracked, I'm tracking it, okay? But it's an afterwards, not ahead of time. My goal is I want to be the absolute best. That's always the goal. Whatever I'm doing, I'm never going to half ass it. I want to be on top of the list or not on the list at all. It's really that simple for me, right? So I look at who's the first person, I'm chasing them until I get there. Right. So I'm constantly before I'm even reach my current goal, I'm already set the next one. And I already set the next one. So with that being said, said Haley, when it comes to setting goals, I don't want you to I, I tell this to your new agents all the time. If you sit down with Grant Cardone today, brand new agent, you sit down with Grant Cardone today for lunch, you wouldn't understand 90 percent of the stuff that comes through his mouth. Because you don't have the base, you don't have the database. So if you said Grant Cardone is the person as you are chasing, you're going to have to do a lot of work. And it's going to feel like you are not getting anything done because you are so far apart, right? Also, you can't compare yourself some someone day one in the industry to day 50 years, right, in the industry because it is a different animal. So what I want you to choose, Haley, when you're setting your goals and who are you chasing, you have to chase someone because there's no reason for you to start building this all by yourself. If, if somebody's already done it, go follow them, copy and paste. That's what I do. I'm the world best copycat ever. I follow people. I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. I go and do the same thing and put it into my business. But I want you to chase the person who's one step ahead, not the person who's like way up there, 11 years in right? One step ahead. And when you reach that person, who's the next person? So if you are in a phase of life where you just started your social media account, maybe follow somebody who has 5,000 followers, see what they're doing, right? And then as soon as you start seeing the, um, you know, the, the, the it's taking off, right? Then you go to 15,000 then go to 30 then go to 100, right? But don't go from zero to 100,000 because that's a lot of work, right? So same with everything. If you are in a phase of life and I have no idea where you are healing your real estate career, but let's say you are going to do one, your goal is to do one transaction a month, right? Then find somebody who's doing that. Take them out for coffee. Ask them those questions. What do you do? What do your calendar looks like? What's your mindset? How did you get here? Like, where are your leads are coming from? What do you do every day? Show me. Can I just, can I just follow you around for a day? I'll be a wallflower. You won't even know I'm here. Like I literally would jump when I was working in first few years of my career, I literally jumped into people's cars. They were leaving the office. I'm like, I'm going with you. I would grab my notebook. I didn't ask if I can or not. I was sitting on the passenger seat. And I'm like, you won't even know I'm here. I promise. I'm just going to sit here. Right. So copy the person who's first, you know, first step or one step ahead and constantly copy that person and set the goal, that goal next, not the horrendous one way out there. But I do want me that same sentence. I want you to if, have you guys seen The Secret or anything mindset or, you know, so those kind of things, I'm a huge believer in it, in it. And if you can't imagine it, you can't have it. So I do, I don't want you to limit your imagination. I want you to do dream big, but I also want you to understand that it's one step at a time, right? You can't have nine companies if you never even started an LLC. It would be overwhelming. You know what I mean? So I want you to just dream big so you can imagine it because the universe will show you how to get there, but then take it bite-sized pieces. You know how to eat an elephant? One bite at a time. One bite at a time. Because if you try to eat it all at once, you probably choke and die, right? So we don't want that. So I want you to have big goals, but I also want you to have cute little goals and follow the people that already achieved them so you can copy and paste. And don't invent the wheel. It's, if it's somebody's already doing it, just copy and paste. MJ, I think you have a, do you have a question? I see you unmuted for a second. Oh, I have a question. Yes, go. 
Um, so I, I am going to get my videos going, but I have been posting once a day, almost once a day on TikTok since New Year's. Okay. And I think that has helped me get my confidence of being in front of a camera. I can talk to people all day long and I go in front of a camera and I'm like, okay, I can say that sentence. Then what is my next thing where I can talk for hours, hours upon end without a script or anything. And I get in front of a camera and my brain goes mush. Yeah. So the question is why? So you must have an underlying condition that you care about what people think on the other end. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So as I like to say, as I'll start caring about your opinion as soon as I can deposit it into my bank account. <laughs> okay. Okay. So as long as you know that they're going to judge you no matter what, they're judging you already, MJ, from those yeah. TikTok videos that you already did. They're judging you even when you're in front of them. People do yeah. judge. They judge by the cover. They judge by the inside. They just judge. Right. That's yeah. how we decide if you're going to be friends with someone or not be friends with someone because we're judging them based on who they are. We all do it. Right. So if you know they already doing it, it's happening to you every single day. They're going right. to have an, they are going to have an opinion no matter what. But the problem is, as I like to ask the agents and I'm doing the trainings, can I send my kids to college on your opinion, MJ? No. Can I buy my requirement home on your opinion? No. Okay. So then it doesn't matter. Yeah. But right. I will say short form has helped me figure out who I am. Cause I went out and tried to do what Levi does and I can't do it, but he's been doing it for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I just started following you, but I, um, and you also realize, right. What is your style? I don't want, you know, the saying that you don't work a day in your life. If you love what you do, right. that's why there's right. so many ways to do social media marketing. If I had to do long form YouTube, like I just started YouTube because my TV show is hosted on YouTube. Right. Um, and that's horizontally shot. Everything I do is shot vertical. Yes. So if I yes. wanted to do a YouTube account, I have to duplicate everything or I have to have hideous videos with a little stripe in the middle, right? So now I'm going to have to duplicate myself and create twice the amount of work just so I can have a YouTube presence. So while maybe I'll say, you know what? I leave YouTube to Levi. He's killing it. I go to Instagram, right? And so I want you to find what is that social media platform that you absolutely love. I'm not saying you shouldn't be on everything. I am everywhere. I am on YouTube and I'm on TikTok, but like I have a TikTok account. I never even logged in. I have a social media manager who manages that for me. Do I believe that you should be on TikTok? Absolutely. You should be everywhere. You should be on Google, on Facebook, Facebook groups, on Instagram, you name it, YouTube, right? It's just, you don't have to be the one doing it all. Now, some platforms like YouTube is going to be horizontal content versus pretty much everything else is going to be vertical content. So what I do is when I go to events, of course, I have a videographer taping me. If I go on podcasts, it's horizontal. So many of the things that are already shot in horizontal, I just automatically plug it into YouTube. But I don't wake up in the morning thinking about, I need to create content for YouTube. YouTube is not my home, right? Instagram and Facebook is my home. But I am still on YouTube with the content that comes to me that's shot horizontally. So MJ, if you feel comfortable on TikTok, Take that and put it into YouTube Shorts. It's the same exact thing. Right, it's just right. Something different, right? Uh, the difference is the length. On um, YouTube Shorts, you can't do more than 58 seconds. So you're going to have to create really short, short content, right? But you can use it on those platforms. So you can have a, pre a presence on all of them, but really only do the one that feels good for you. Okay. So Shorts only 58 seconds? On YouTube, yeah. On TikTok, okay. I think you can go up to 10 minutes. Um, yeah, I can go three minutes. I would never want to go 10 minutes. I, yeah. I get bored watching people after two minutes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So you got it. And then re refurbish all of that content, right? So if you can keep all of your content under 58 seconds, then, you know, I can post it on TikTok. I can post it on YouTube. I can post it on Instagram. You can post it everywhere as long as it fits into that platform's requirements. Right. So what I yeah, do is find my home. My home is Instagram. That's where I post everything personally. And then I have virtual assistants and they take it from there and they plaster it everywhere. So I am everywhere. It's just, I am not the one doing the work. Right. I like Instagram, uh, Instagram, but I like the tools on TikTok. So I put, yeah. do TikTok, then take out the watermark. Then I can repost. Look at you go, MJ. You got this. I'm getting there. You and got this girl. That's because I, I couldn't do the long form yet. 
but I'm yeah. getting there. And maybe I'm, that won't be your, maybe that won't be ever, right? Like the, the beauty of real estate and marketing is that you get to do it your way. Right. But I have, I've got to start my, for my 12 videos, I've got 30 days. So I need to done. make sure I'm on before I But even it. YouTube doesn't have to be necessarily long form, right? You can, it just has right. to be horizontal. You can still create a one minute video for YouTube that will have millions of views. It just has to be horizontal. Right. And it doesn't right. have to be 30 minutes long, right? Like you can say the same exact thing, or I'm sure Levi can, can she shoot it horizontal and then Liran just cut it into vertical as well. So that we yeah, every, every it. single, every single horizontal video can be cropped to a, uh, a, into a real or a short. There you go. Unless you move across and across, then you have to stay in one place for that. But yeah. yeah. I've got, got I've got my office set up and everything, so I'm ready to go. Good job. Hey, make yourself this. So I do what's called a CPR. Write it down. C is your commitment. So things that I don't freaking feel like doing because there are things that I don't feel like doing. And then I have to keep myself in the tush to actually get it done. So C is your commitment. So MJ, your commitment always has to have a date. So by the end of this week, you are going to shoot how many horizontal YouTube videos for Levi? One. Whoa, big commitment. One. How long is that video going to be, MJ? About 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Okay, that is a big commitment. Okay, so that's like 15 videos. Well, okay, right. It's going to be a map vlog. That's what I'm going to do because I feel very comfortable with that. Okay, I don't, I'm, so. I'm very happy for what, what, what is a map vlog? Where you just show different areas in a certain city and then you go drive around those cities and, oh, okay, and show it. different okay. houses. Okay. So you are going to have your map vlog by Friday this week, correct? That's your C. That's your commitment. Write it down. C, commitment. You're committed <laughs> to get that 50 minutes map vlog done by Friday. True? Yes. Okay. True. I may, not, I may not submit it uh, yet. but uh, 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 uh. I, No, no. Let me. Because I, I have to have a couple <laughs> before I submit because I've got 30 days in my 30 days starts the day I send my first one. And that's what panics me. That's, okay. So then don't that's submit honestly it. That's honestly what has held me back. Okay. Don't submit it. Just shoot it. So shoot your 15 minute video by Friday. Horizontal. Got it? Okay. Commitment. P is your penalty. What happens, MJ, if you don't get it done? And usually that would be something like for me, you have to set your penalty high enough where it hurts. If it doesn't hurt, you're like, eh, I'll just do it next week. So my penalty, if something's very important to me, my penalty usually is I would have to jump out of an airplane. <laughs> guess who is never, guess who is never going to jump out of an airplane? So guess who's going to get it done by Friday? This one. So your P, MJ, it could be something that you love very much and you have to take it away from yourself for a very long time. Like, for example, do you have kids, MJ? Four. Okay. Do you like hugging them or telling them how much you love them and supporting them in anything they do? If they call you right now, you drop everything and go. Absolutely. Okay. So how about I make your penalty? You cannot tell your kids that you love them. You cannot hug them and you cannot help them with absolutely anything for a straight month if you don't get your video done by Friday. Okay. <laughs> you can't, e oh, even better. You can't even answer their phone calls. Or my grandkids. I love my grandkids more than my kids. I've got 13 of them and I love them way more. Way hey, we're, not gonna, we're not gonna cut this video and show it to them, okay? We're just gonna skip that. But- Okay. How about your grandkids and kids? Let's top it. Let's put a cherry on the top. Like you cannot answer any call from your grandkids or kids. You cannot go to their games. You can't call them on their birthdays. You can't hug them. You can't tell them you love them. You can't do anything with them for a straight month if you do not get your video done by Friday. How is that for a penalty? That is a big penalty. Are you going to get okay. it done today? I will get it done. You see, if, if your penalty, if you set your penalty high enough where it hurts, you will get whatever done. The next one, the R in the CPR is, is reward. Sometimes I work, some people work towards pain and some people work away from pain, right? Towards pleasure. So depending what type of personality you are. So now set your reward to something that is like, ooh, if I get that done, I'll get myself the Gucci belt, whatever that is. I get a massage. I'll turn my phone off for a day and go to a spa and everybody lose my number, right? Whatever that reward is, 
So write it down. What is that thing that you've been like golfing, Nad? You look like you golf. Do you golf now? Skiing. Skiing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a big skier. There you go. So you say, you know what? I'll take a day off and I'll go skiing. And I'll take my best friend with me and we'll do mimosas before we go out there. And then we, oh, well, maybe not a good idea to ski on mimosas. No. <laughs> Don't listen, don't listen to my great ideas because who knows, you're going to have really fun and end up in a hospital. So don't listen to my idea. But whatever that is that you love so much that you want to treat yourself, what is that reward? Skiing. Skiing, there you um, go. I want to take off next weekend and ski. There you go. So you're going to yeah, get your clothes on by Friday yeah. and then you schedule that skiing trip and you cancel out your calendar and you do nothing, MJ, but ski. Yep. So that's what I do. I always do CPR on myself because I have a very strong personality. So if I don't feel like doing something, I'm not doing it. But if it still needs to get done, because you said and you are as good as your word, right, MJ? And nobody here is going to hold you accountable. If you don't do it, what you promise here to do, your word is at stake, not mine. Yeah. Not only your word, but it's your work ethic. It's your Human nature is at stake. I'm not sure what that's called in English. I can't think of the word. Your character. Your reputation. Your reputation, right? So I will get it done because I believe I'm as good as my word. If I say I'm going to be here today, I am here today. And if for whatever, if, unless I'm in, pretty much in a coma, right? Because I take my word very seriously. So when you do CPR, it only works if you honor it, if you are as good as your word. So if you don't get it done by Friday, you're not hugging those kids. You're not answering phone calls. You're not going to games. You're not doing anything because if you don't cause pain for yourself, you're going to do it over and over again. So we have what we have in life because of who we are today. In order to change something, you have to change you. Mm -hmm. And the only way you can sense. change you is by rewarding yourself or by causing pain or towards pleasure or away from pain. There's only two types of human. Or we go away from pain, or we go towards pleasure. But that's only two things that drives us. Hey, Google, sorry for interrupting, but you have a call in one minute. Okay. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Hopefully this helped. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. All Thank right. you. Sorry, Caroline, we didn't get to answer your question. Message it's me. Okay, Google. You, I, you got it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank Bye. you so much. Thank you. Gogo. Bye. Y'all have a great day. And uh, tune in next week. We will have, let me see, who do we have next week? I think it's Michael. Is it? Oh, no, Maris. Is Maris next week? No, I think I skipped a week. Uh, next week is, yep, Michael. Michael Valdez. Uh, another, going to be another great conversation. So I hope you took quite a bit of uh, value away from that. And it let us know in the comments on the Facebook group as well. If you want to share any thoughts or have any additional questions there, you can probably tag Gogo and see if she can uh, get back to you uh, on there as well. Clearly she's active on Facebook. So I think a lot of very powerful information in there. And that's what I love. She, she you know, she appreciates her opportunity and nothing more powerful than somebody that appreciates their opportunity because it just makes it more fun as well. Right. I mean, when you appreciate that you get to do something versus you have to do something, it's a complete mindset shift and it's, and it really makes the day a lot more enjoyable. So I get to create content, you know, I get to, and, and content allows me the opportunity, all the other opportunities that are coming up in our lives is because of the content. And so for me, it's a non-negotiable period. Content is a non-negotiable because it opens up so many more doors than me living in my own world and not being seen as Gogo -Go said. Gogo -Go said, you got to be seen. And this is something we've talked about. You want to survive in this market right now? You've got to be the most visible agent. You've got to be visible. People have to know who they can go to because they are buying and selling homes every single day. And if that doesn't feel like the case in your case, then work on your visibility, work on making some noise, work on, uh, you know, getting out there and letting people know uh, what you're doing. And again, incorporate, don't dedicate. And yes, your calendar is your social content. 
I mean, love that. Man, that was so powerful. Your calendar is your social content. So make sure your calendar is booked out and uh, you will have plenty of stuff to, to document along the way. And it, and it will change your business. So uh, I've got a hard stop as well. I've got a I've got a jump. So make sure you join in next week. Hit me up on Facebook or uh, in school if you have any other additional questions. Sorry, Paul and Carolyn, I'll have to um, get back with you guys. But I've got to run. But hit me up in there, and we will see you next week. Yeah. Thank you for joining us on today's podcast. If you're interested in partnering with us to access our YouTube course and coaching at no cost, schedule a call at PassiveProspectingPartner.com.